What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brandon's Face. It's the podcast about a playlist. My name is Jonathan Beardsley. And I am Brandon May. We hope you're all having a good week. But before we dive into this week's playlist, let's talk a little bit about Coachella Weekend 2, shall we? Sure. Uh, as always, it turned out to be better than Weekend 1 in almost every single way possible. <laughs> the sound was better. The guests were de- better, depending on who you're personally a fan of. There were a lot less delays. And all of the performers seemed to be a lot more at ease this week. How do you think Weekend 2 went as opposed to Weekend 1? Yeah, a lot of pressure is off, right? You've already done it. Yeah. You just got to do it again. Um, yeah, man, from everything that I've heard, everything that I've seen, um, we, I, you know, I had a couple, a couple of buddies that went this weekend uh, or last weekend, and they had a blast. They said they don't regret going Weekend 2 ever. I think it went off with a bang. Judging by the live streams, I mean... It, it, it is what it is. Like you said, it depends on who you like as guests. But I think I think Weekend 2 got the better guests and got the better performances. And although there was quite a few technical difficulties um, Weekend 2, which is uh, abnormal for the Cacharella Music Festival. Of course, there will, there will still be some goats. Yeah. But <laughs> let, let's dive into what streams we caught from Weekend 2, shall we? Yes, uh, the Yuma Tent. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't catch much in real time. Talk to me about the Yuma. How was it? Uh, epic as always. Um, it's sure. it's too small for the amount of people that want to be in there, but it's the perfect size for what it is. Um, Disco Shark obviously is uh, iconic. Um, mm-hmm. All the all the the lighting is is it's astronomically cool, man. Like it's just really cool. And they, they've got some, some lasers and stuff in there this year too. Uh, test pilot set was fucking awesome. At one point he's like building up, building up, building up, building up. And then he just gets on the mic and says balls and then drops it. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta love that. And of course he made a couple of comments about Frank Ocean. Uh, Sasha, (laughs) Sasha and Digweed tore the fucking house down so did did. idris elba i was a part of a live stream chat on reddit and somebody somebody commented man it was really rude of idris to burn the yuma tent down on friday (laughs) yeah that was kind of surprising the reception to his set and just how good he is i I kind of underestimated him myself the 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 guy's a (laughs) multi-talented person i mean fuck sing actor singer fucking dj <laughs> like, yeah i think we we often conflate how hard djing is by how good the producers that we're watching are live the act of djing is not that difficult it comes down to your taste and yes of course your skill at transition and timing which a lot of people do naturally have it's not a crazy skill to have and Idris seems like the type of dude that would have both of those, you know? Right, right. Yeah, he he absolutely killed it. Um, I haven't listened to all of Adam Bayer's yet, but from what I have listened to, he just brings the whole fucking festival down with him. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it, it was cool. And uh, Sasha and Digweed closing their set with Higher State of Consciousness by the legendary Josh Wink is a, uh, it's a baller move, man. It's a baller move. And... This was the tent with a disco ball shark hanging yes. above the stage, correct? Disco shark. He uh, he's been he's been a staple of Yuma. Um, maybe maybe some people don't know this. Uh, Yuma is not booked by Golden Voice. Yuma is booked by the promoter uh, Framework, and Framework books for uh, Sound Nightclub in Los Angeles, uh, rather Hollywood. Um, I've seen Colts there. I've seen Feed Me there. Um, and Egyptus, uh, right? uh, no, we, uh, I saw Egyptus at, uh, Avalon, uh, oh, which is, right. which is that's sometimes right. promoted by framework, but, um, disco shark resides at sound nightclub throughout the year, except for two weekends out of the year. That's fucking rad. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. It looks sick on stage. If you, oh, yeah. you or anybody listening gets the chance to check it out. It's oh, fucking yeah. rad. Somebody DM me with a, uh, with an enamel pin of disco shark and I'll buy it immediately yes yes maybe we should do that maybe. let's let's take that out of the episode and let's do that <laughs> ourselves um so i did go back and i watched a few sets i caught pusha and charlie again both of their performance both of their performances were really good but nearly identical to the first weekend charlie played track 10 which is my favorite track of hers so i was really happy for that 
I saw Labyrinth this weekend, who was once again phenomenal. He brought out Zendaya to perform All of Us, which I promptly texted you freaking out about. Um, that's my favorite song of his, and I don't think we'll ever see it performed live with the both of them again. So that was a really, really cool moment to see. Also, shout out to the person in the crowd I saw holding up the Euphoria Season 1 soundtrack on vinyl. <laughs> the only person on Earth more excited and prepared for that moment than me. <laughs> That's amazing. Dude, it caught my eye immediately. It's the, like, back camera pushing in on the stage. You can see it, like, a few seconds in. It's phenomenal. <laughs> And I think in the wake of Frank Ocean canceling, Sunday night of Weekend 2 was head headlined by Blink-182, followed by Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again. There was none of the drama of Week 1. Blink-182 showed up on time and played pretty much the same set, although Mark interpolated I Wish instead of No Scrubs. They also did play Stay Together for the Kids, which I do not think That's that they true. played the, uh, the week prior. You might be right about that. Um, the between song banter was still good. Not quite as great. <laughs> it was but... so bad, bro. None of the jokes landed. The only one joke that landed was you guys like Indio and everyone goes, yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what do you think about my nuts Indio mouth? <laughs> yeah, yes. they, they were clearly forcing it, but it was all worth it to hear Mark get to say he went from chemo to Coachella on stage. That yes. was the best moment of the set for me yes. and just really put everything with them and myself everything in life into perspective it was great yeah um and almost immediately after they finished skrillex fortet and fred again started playing their set at the end of the catwalk in the roundabout surrounded by a bunch of lights the uh the massive crowd was into it from beginning until end they played literally everything you could have expected or wanted them to including fortet dropping country rhythm on everybody's head as soon as he could um <laughs> and at the end of it they set off every firework left in coachella's budget this year it was beautiful man it was a beautiful moment for them and just for dance music in general right yes absolutely i would like to take a second though and appreciate how much of a fucking goofball fortet has earned the right to be after being such a prolific producer's producer in electronic mm -hmm. music for the last 25 years and yes. um i'm not sure if anybody noticed the timing of it but at midnight is curfew for sunday night at coachella and every minute afterwards it's about a thousand dollars or something like that sometimes if i think like the first 10 minutes is ten thousand, and then Every minute after that is a thousand or something like that. The city mm -hmm. of India has it all in their contract to break curfew for Tets on the deck. And you can tell that like, he's kind of apprehensive about breaking curfew. And then he says, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to drop some Miley Cyrus. We just, yes, we did. need to appreciate how perfectly timed that was and how much of a fucking goofball that guy is prop <laughs> toast to Mr. Fortet. For also dropping Carly Rae Jepsen, Taylor <laughs> Swift, and literally any other pop star he wants to, because he just does not give a fuck. He doesn't right? give a fuck. He's not even trying to promote the album he has coming out this year. I so. love, I love how in all of the like hype pictures of the fireworks going off and Skrillex and Fred freaking out, he's just holding his phone, taking pictures <laughs> of the fireworks. <laughs> like, dude, you're a part of the picture, be right, <laughs> right. He just doesn't care. I love the like ghoulish low res pictures of him standing behind when they're DJed. It's it's right. incredible, man. He's, he's just lurking. Yes. Hopefully this inspires Coachella to get much more creative with headliners going forward cuz this stuff works, man. And that didn't just work because things fell apart. That would have worked no matter what. Yes. Um and then I also wasn't expecting them to put lasers on the light posts on the the speaker stands oh no, that was smart that was yep. really cool and then uh people who were fans of fred again set in 2022 got to hear we lost dancing again uh it just overall was a, it was it was a really great set man i wish uh i wish i was there i'm not gonna lie that, that the was a fireworks was a cool set. crescendo of still here with the ones that i came with into cinema <laughs> good god man like they they really put some work into that for it coming together so last minute and you could tell it was last minute by, by the way that they were set up not right. to say they wouldn't have done something similarly minimal but like i think the way it was thrown together made it feel more special like it was kind of like the kenny beats thing it felt like a real party just at night right. 
Right. Yeah. And a slightly less beautiful but equally great moment came during Ted Mouse's test pilot set in the Yuma when he just randomly dropped the music and said, sorry, I left my ice rink back in Canada. Right, exactly. <laughs> Classic Joel. Um, anything else from Coachella you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think, I think I'm good, man. Uh, the desert has calmed down. We have Stagecoach coming this weekend, and uh, that'll be it for festival season until October. And then, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it, it was an interesting season. Um, saw a bunch of wooks out in public today, which was funny. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, are you seeing the country crowd rolling in now with Stagecoach? No, I went to go get some takeout today, and I saw what was very clearly the, the cleanup wooks. Um, the people that just you know go from festival to festival get free tickets because they clean yep. up everything at the end of the at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the love festival. that life. Oh yeah, man. You, and you, it's funny because you can tell like immediately, and it's not like a smell thing like you would think, but it, it's it's a it's it's a it's much it's more an eye of a, test and yeah, a vibe test for sure yeah. for sure. <laughs> All right, man. Let's dive into this week's episode, starting with a track that feels like it was made specifically for me this is the black <laughs> coffee remix of do for love by snow allegra yes it's not my song of the week surprisingly but i am could not be more in love with this song it is fucking incredible man what are your thoughts on it yeah both uh both snow allegra and black coffee are doing their individual things excellently on this track uh the piano the subdued drums the gorgeous voice just fucking Dude, love just, this track you nailed it right away the piano the yep. piano is fucking masterful in this remix. It makes oh, yeah. it, it drives it. Black Coffee, I would literally just love to hear a piano set of him, similar to the way Fred does the actual life piano ones. Right. I think he could do it beautifully, or Gareth Emery. He's on that level of player. Yep. He just rarely uses it. Uh, I, th- I, th- I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I'd love to, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear like a I think this is the piano evidence. house album. Maybe I'm overhyping it on one one track no, here, but gorgeous, I think bro. this is the evidence that he is a next level piano player as well as an EDM producer. Yeah, no, no, this was this was excellent. Um, all right, let's move on to this new one from DRS, Tyler Daly, and Caliber called "I Remember." This is like the second or third track from this group of three that we've reviewed, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, they've re- they've released a few. I really dug this. It's a nice little down tempo drum and bass tune. What'd you think of it? Uh, yeah, man, Caliber coming out through, uh, 2023 with a fantastic track. This guy can do no wrong. Uh, DRS and Tyler Daly, I'm not very familiar with, but Caliber is the, uh, unspoken king of drum and bass. Uh, so yeah, man, this is very good. Yeah. I almost wonder if we're getting a DRS and Tyler Daly project sometime this year. Fuck. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. That'd be cool. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but they've definitely released a few songs and all of them have been really good so far. Yep. All right, man. Talk to me about this new sub focus track, Fine Day. Uh, yeah, man. The, another great fucking D&B track. It's always fun when we have a couple of them, uh, when we have a couple of drum and bass tracks for the playlist. Uh, right. Yeah. I, uh. I had actually heard this song before because uh, every time Subfocus dropped it at one of his shows, the drum and bass subreddit would get filled with <laughs> videos of please somebody ID <laughs> this song. <laughs> and it's been oh, ID'd. Man. <laughs> there are few highs that compare to chasing an ID. I know, <laughs> man. I know. You, you know, know, I actually, that's my first uh, trance story is chasing an ID that I heard while all fucked up. And uh, it turns out it was Cosmic Gates, Exploration of I Space. I was going to ask, is it the Cosmic Gate one, man? Yeah. It took me oh, months to find it. I was, yeah. I, and I, I knew nothing about EDM at that moment. So I was like, fucking Cynthy dance music and like no words in every, there, right? every you know, well i i think i had heard the extended mix and it, it, it's the only words in that song are exploration of space and obviously that went right through my head because I, I wasn't in uh any mind yeah. at that moment so i was just trying to trying to find it and i finally did it was great yeah i feel like kids are like conscious and aware of their surroundings by like five i think when we were kids it was like 13 is when you were kind of accountable right for yourself and your memories at that point um yep. yeah man i i had some early ids mine was ian von Dahl's castles in the sky and again of course it's in the fucking song repeated <laughs> it's the only words type those in you'll find it 
<laughs> search engines weren't as big of a thing back then. It was what Ask Jeeves. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was like I'm sure it was like Google Video too. I don't even think it was YouTube at God the time. Like it. we're so old and washed. <laughs> Ugh. Um, yeah, man, this song was really fun, really nostalgic feeling. The vocal chops on it were great. Yeah, it was, feel, a, it feels, was a nice one. It feels old. That's why we both just got pretty nostalgic. Uh, I believe Subfocus has a new album coming out. I'll have to check out a release date for that, but we'll definitely throw that on our release calendar as soon as possible. Most definitely. Okay, let's talk about this new one from Rez, Shadiant, and fucking Sid called Blue in the Face. They are putting the Rez in Trent Reznor right now with noise punk <laughs> like this, my friend. It is incredible. Rez has been posting about how they wanted to go into a more punk era for a bit. And if this is an indication of what's to come, sign me up, man. It's incredible. I'm I'm all down for it. Did you have the same reaction to it? I did, though. Inject this shit into my fucking veins, man. This Thank is you. heavy and massive. I love this. Yeah. Um, very, very excited to see where this is going. And I love that Rez has been working with fucking Sid for a while now. Might have done more songs with Shadiant, too. But every song between Rez and fucking Sid so far has been A+, plus in my opinion. I would have to agree with that, sir. Speaking of A+, new one from Boris Brekka, level one. And big surprise, it's great, because everything he makes is just fucking crisp and excellent. This is no <laughs> different. How'd you feel about this one, my, man? My notes say, as always, immaculate. Dude, <laughs> he can do no wrong. It's crazy how, like distinct his sound is at this point i did not see the playlist when this came on the first time i heard it and i knew who it was right. instantly from the way the bass right. sounded it was like that's boris <laughs> that's fucking yep. boris <laughs> i do you think the mask should be more iconic than it is at this point yeah i kind of do man um it was it was a weird choice for coachella in my opinion to put him at the sahara um tent i, I where honestly, would you have put him sunset outdoor hour and a half um okay but uh i like that i, I think it would just go with him better you know but whatever especially uh, since his songs are like 10 minutes long yeah yeah i think he needs an hour and a half at least which they did mm -hmm. give him they gave him an hour and a half and they cut his they cut him out like 12 23 first uh first weekend but uh but yeah man he had like some visuals in the sahara of his mask kind of dancing around and it's like it is kind of iconic at this point man and yeah I don't know. People I think he's still, it, dude. he's still underground a little bit. So he's definitely, he's blowing definitely up, underground. Still. Well deserved. And yeah. I, I think, I don't know if he's going to have the Fred again, Ascension over the next year, like from last Coachella to this Coachella, but man, I hope he starts to get more recognition. Closing down the Sahara is a big spot to get. So he's clearly being recognized by the bookers, but I hope people start to support his music commercially as well. Yeah, same. Uh, let's talk about some commercial music, man. We got a Purple Disco Machine remix <laughs> of Compliance by Muse. I really like Purple Disco Machine. I, I will say I love Purple Disco Machine, and he did a great job with this remix. But I refuse to go on record liking anything associated with this Muse album. So I'm going to say that this is terrible, even though it's not. What are your thoughts on it? And we've come to my song. I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> Yes, I love yeah, that. You yeah, just made my heart sink into my balls, dude. Yeah, this is this is very, this is very weird. Uh, it's 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 kind of funny because like you can tell that Purple Disco Machine probably didn't want to do this. His heart was not in this. Was phoned in as a remix. Sounds uh, like it. You can tell his label was like, "Hey, man, we're gonna need you to do this remix of a new song," and he was probably uprising. They were like, "No." Compliance. Yeah, right. Give know? me a good news <laughs> song at least. You like, know, like I, I didn't even remember if this was on like the it, last album. I was like, was this song? Yeah, it, it was, was on that terrible it fucking sure album. Was. Yeah, man. Do like super massive black hole remix right. fucking undisclosed desires. Do any other song but this. <laughs> Do any other album but this. Fuck this. Yeah. Um love Purple Disco Machine getting that bag though. He deserves it. Yeah, hopefully he got paid enough to phone it. Oh, in. he did. He, the, he did. The, there it is. He threw the purple disco machine drum behind it and was like, uh, yep, yeah, that's a that's a day. <laughs> Whatever, if you listen to his remix of All I Want by Boys Noise, or even his remix of About Damn Time by Lizzo, you can hear when he's really into the remix. Oh, you know? for sure. Yeah. 
God damn, I'm still jealous you have that All I Want remix on vinyl. That's a fire remix. It, it really is, man. Um, all right, let's move on to this new one from Vintage Culture. It's his remix of Rock the Casbah. Don't know how I'm feeling about this one. And how are you feeling about it? Yeah, this song did not need a remix. Um, that's, that's definitely not. That's really it, man. Um, I actually did. I watched, I, well, I watched like the first 25 minutes of Vintage Culture's Coachella set on weekend one. And we didn't talk about it because I really didn't want to bring down the energy. But since we're reviewing his song, honestly, bro, his set was not that good. I was actually like waiting for it to be better. I think he's. He, he might have turned a page a little bit and is going a little less minimal, a little bit more commercial, which is fine. But it's it, it always it always feels weird to see it in real time, you know? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I, I'm trying to think. It might have been... I mean, his remix of Get What You Want by Lastlings was like the last time I was fucking just floored by him. And since then, in announcing his album, I got really stoked. But all of the releases since then just haven't hit me quite the same as his stuff did last year. We'll I know that this has no indication of an album. This is a fucking festival remix, if I've ever heard it. Correct. But, yeah, um, did not get me much more hyped <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel you, bro. But a song that did get me very hyped is the new one from Adam Bayer and Green Velvet called Simulator. Are you digging this one as much as I have been? This is a dance floor destroyer, bro. I yes. need an extended mix of this ASAP. <laughs> I uh, I didn't watch Adam Bayer's full set yet. I haven't listened to it yet, rather. But I'm curious to know if he dropped this. It's funny. I was on my notifications, and I saw Adam Bayer. Oh, cool. Adam Bayer in green velvet. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like I double t- I did a double the take appropriate on my phone. reaction to I was have like to oh that. shit I didn't even preview it I was like that's going on I'm sure it's going to be a banger and lo and behold here it is yeah it is what it says it is it is constant <laughs> stimulation it is right. great I loved it uh, let's move on to this new one from Blawan called Toast I know nothing about this artist but I saw that they've announced an album coming out soon so give me a little bit of background on where this came from if you can uh, I don't have any background really I just d- I needed you to know that I wasn't going to stop putting weird shit on our playlist because um, okay. I had gone a few weeks without doing some like really weird shit so this is some weird shit and I dig it it is very weird I would describe it as a collection of sounds <laughs> And I think that that is accurate. Is, is, it, is that what Ross is from Friends says when he's when he's doing his doing his little DJ thing? If it is, I unintentionally quoted Friends, and for that I am sorry. But <laughs> yeah, man, I don't I don't know. This one bordered on a little too weird for me, but I did listen through every time it came on, just out of sheer what the fuck is going on right, right now. <laughs> I, so say, I, I say we cover I the album. I say we if cover the album. To, let's I do. do it. Let's I, let, I like do weird it. shit. It's cool. You can't dance to it, but it's it's something. Yeah, I I can't say no to weird shit, or else I might be thrown out of the Pacific Northwest. We have to embrace <laughs> that up here. We're told to. Right. Um, dude, let's move on to this new one from Flostradamus and Lemay called Olad because I had no idea Flostradamus was still going. <laughs> I. I, it's only one guy now, which does right. bum me out a little bit, but this is still Flostradamus music, dude. All it's missing is the damn son, where'd you find this sample? And we're straight <laughs> back in, like, 2013. Yes! <laughs> oh, man, I always regretted. I was at a festival, and I, I saw De Oro instead of Flostradamus, and I always kind of regretted that decision. But, uh, yeah, the at title... The, like, Height of the Hoodie Nation era? Yeah, man, it was, it Ooh. was, I, I, I was like, I, I was, I was into the music and I was like, I'm gonna stay here. And everybody was like, you're fucking stupid. Um, and they were correct. Uh, look, man, the title <laughs> of this track is indeed correct. Uh, Flostradamus is doing a back to back with somebody. I forget, I forget who, uh, at Hard Summer this year. And I'm sure that this will get dropped in the set and it's probably going to be a very good one. Man, I'm glad Floss is still going. I have no idea what's happened to like Uzi and everybody else from that trap right. EDM era. Hope they're doing okay. <laughs> um, okay, talk to me about this next one because it is great and a little confusing. We're getting a 2011 mix of Together by Maceoplex. Explain. I, I don't have an explanation for you. I saw it came out and I listened to it and I thought it was a little different than the original Together that I had heard and 
threw it on and it's an it's a good track it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of chill um but mr plex always always delivers i will do okay. some more research but i haven't had any time this week to do so so the story behind it remains a mystery but it is a good track and i'm happy to hear it yep uh moving on to a fucking banger from ac slater <laughs> and screw fizzer called night rider if this doesn't make you want to throw on some big ass jeans and two step around the room, absolutely <laughs> nothing will, right? Absolutely, man. It's funny you talk about Boris having a distinctive style, and AC Slater has had a distinctive style for a long time. And, oh yeah, yes. and it's every time he comes on, you're like, oh, yep, that's that that's some night bass right there. Yep, that is hard summer if I've ever heard it. <laughs> right. Right. The only more hard summer artist would be fucking Destructo, right? right? But hey, man, he got that back. He sold. He sold hard to uh, Insomniac. So, yeah. Well, are they on the lineup this year? You know, Destructo or AC Slater? No, both. Of them yeah. Are. Damn. So it's not really hard. No, it, it, right. Destructo was a mainstay because obviously he owned the joint, so he could do whatever. But he always played early in the day, and I was lucky enough to see him do a set in one of the warehouse style stages at hard summer 2015 and man it was really cool it was really cool i would love to know the behind the scenes politics of like the early 2010s hard versus insomniac booking thing because it seemed artists were very loyal to certain ones right like justice really only played hard events beat roots I think mostly boys noise played hard events he didn't play right insomniac a ton it was it was weird right it was weird it really was there's weird. not a lot of info out there about it other than lol pasquale like, i mean okay. yeah that and i i really can't imagine boys noise playing with a giant owl behind him you know so i mean he has now right right but yes yeah, since since the does the berlin wall of edm fell <laughs> now they all just play everything but... yeah that was topical bro <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, man, let's move on because I'm very excited about this next track. It's a new one from Subtract, Sampha, and George Riley called LFO. And I think Subtract knew if he put Sampha on a song, I was going to fucking love it. So yep. congrats to him. <laughs> and that jazzy outro, just Whew. fucking incredible. Loving this one. The new album drops May 5th. How stoked are you for it? Yeah, man, I am so curious to hear how all of the singles we've heard are going to come together on Me an album. Me too. And I know, Me if too. I know anything about Subtract, he's going to do it well. So, yeah, I'm super stoked for the album. This is this is the, the, this one got me real hyped. And you're right, that jazzy outro is. Whew, good yeah, show. I almost thought that might cement it as your song of the week. I wasn't sure. Do we know if this is a referenced? To the band LFO? No, I don't know, but yeah, I, we can <laughs> pretend. <laughs> hey, dude, Chinese food makes me sick. That song was a fucking banger. I think that dude just passed away, actually. So oh, R.I.P. if that's true. Bummer. I shouldn't just say if that's true, but yeah. <laughs> um, all right, man, let's move on. We got a new one from Kaylovsky called Kamikaze. This is the Ruben Karapetian remix. I think we've covered a few remixes he's done. I wish this one was a little more progressive for the length of the track, but I did enjoy it. What about you? You seem more into this minimal I, stuff. I agree. I think I think I, I wish it was a little bit more progressive, but it was good for what it is. It's a it goes pretty hard, man, and it is seven minutes. And sometimes it's you know when when you get in a groove and you're working or you're doing something, and this track comes on, you fucking are very productive in these seven minutes and thirty three seconds. Yeah. I would agree with you there. Um, I've liked all the Ruben Carapetti and remixes we've covered. I just, yeah, I think I wanted a little bit more proggy. Fair. Uh, moving on, we got a new one from The Weekend and Future called Double Fantasy. Oh, man. Okay, so <laughs> Mike Dean and Metro Boomin produced this one, and it very much sounds like Mike Dean and Metro Boomin pr- produced it. You'll like it as much as you typically like their production. But the lyrics and vocals on this song literally just sound like they were copied and pasted from other Weekend and Future <laughs> songs to me. Zero substance, zero depth, could not get into it. But as a whole, if you're just listening to it to not really listen to it, it's not that bad. What about you? What are your thoughts on this one? It's kind of weird. So wh- which one was better, the real Weekend song or the AI Weekend track? I refuse to listen to AI music. <laughs> Thank right. you. I haven't listened to it either. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I This is fine. Future has always been hit or miss for me. Abel obviously sounds great, but 
like you said, the it didn't it didn't grab me. You gonna watch the idol? Um, yeah, but it's gonna be a real like a clockwork orange. They're gonna have to like hold my eyelids open against my will <laughs> and keep like doing the drops so that they don't dry out. <laughs> I I don't think I'm gonna like one second of it, but I'm for sure gonna watch that car crash. <laughs> yeah, fair. What about you? Are you gonna watch that one? I don't have time to watch that. What do you have time to watch? What are you watching? Tell uh, the people what you're watching. <laughs> do I have to? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. <laughs> we we just fin- what are you into? We, here? we just finished a rewatch of the Gilmore Girls. Okay, love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Wait, are you Team Dean? Team uh, Jess? Honestly, man, I'm any. I'm anti. I'm anti. You Logan? I'm anti Rory. Like in thank all, you. In, in thank like you. All all bases you know yeah she's just the worst dude i cannot agree with you more and i feel like her evolution in the uh the prequel or the sequel episodes those four just really cemented her as the worst character in the entire fucking franchise right worse yeah somehow somehow (laughs) um all right we can move on from tv shout out gilmore girls um (laughs) We should do a podcast live from Stars Hollow. I would dig that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they have the setup still. Uh, when we went in 2018, they still had the gazebo, so. Oh, fuck yeah. They better. That's going to be like the, the fucking Back to the Future clock tower on it's the tour, it's man. Stay. You can't get rid of that. Gotta stay. Um, all right, man. Let's move on to this new one from Labyrinth and Billy Eilish called Never Felt So Alone. This one actually came out last week. We kind of missed it. I thought their styles just meshed beautifully over the instrumentals to this one. It's produced very well. And their performance of this at Coachella Weekend One was incredible. What did you think of it? Yeah, uh, after watching the set, his set Weekend One, I, I, it fucking blew my mind, man. I wasn't very familiar with his music, but um, I officially, I'm officially a fan. Uh, this is good stuff. I like this. Yeah, it was really good. And I think she even posted she didn't really want to be like a feature on it. She was a big fan of him and just wanted to do any vocals for any song he wanted. Yep. And she delivered, man. This is fucking great. Nice. All right, let's talk about my song of the week. Yes. Which is Don't Let Me Down by Gus Apperton and Benny. Not a it. surprise that it's my I song of it. the week, man. It's great. And on top of that, we got a, new, a release date for Gus Apperton's new album. It is called Henge, and it comes out July 7th. Hell yeah. I'm fucking stoked. How are you feeling about this one? <laughs> My notes say, I know you're excited about this collab. Very. Uh, yeah, man, I, I was a big fan of this one. This was really good. You know that they're very comfortable working together if he just seeds like the first minute and a half of this song to her without doing yep. anything. Yep. That That's confidence in your collaboration, man. For sure. And obviously, they're both extremely talented. So the, the, this, uh, this uh, his album should be good, man. Yeah. And if it's anything like their last single super lonely then i'm sure this is going to do very well for both of them right uh okay you threw this new one on here from florence and the machine called mermaids i believe it's like part of a deluxe edition she just released of the last album or they just released of the last album what are your thoughts on it uh so i i threw this on number one because it's a good song but i also wanted to uh our loyal listeners will know that i, I wasn't a huge fan of dance fever but i have gone back and revisited it revisited it a number of times and the album is very good as is this track i think i just was in a bad mood or something that week it happens to the best of us. I remember enjoying that one a little more than you do. And everything that I liked about that album is present in this track. So I enjoyed right. it quite a bit. Neat. Uh, let's move on to this new one from Arlo Parks called Blades. I love hearing her sing over like funky up-tempo stuff like this. And I hope we get more tracks like this on the album when it drops. What were you thinking of this one? I don't know, man. It didn't grab me. Yeah, I, I can tell that this one's going to be in between on you. But I think that... She can be surprisingly, I don't know what the verb for earworm is, but I think her music can grow on you without you realizing it. So I'll be yep. interested to see if any of her songs do that to you over time. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll go into it with an open mind. For sure, man. I know you will. Let's talk about this new one from Killer Mike LP and Thank You Good Sir called Don't Let the Devil... But We Do Benny Han is Taking Your Baby Mama is an A-plus bar. <laughs> I just want to lead off with that. I rewound that line like three times on my first listen, and I still love it every time. 
Um, his new album is titled Michael. It's his first new solo album in over 10 years. It drops June 16th. Did this track get you excited for it? Absolutely. Um, it's funny hearing both of them on a track that's not a Run of the Jewels track, but whatever, man. This this uh, this beat is fucking great. It's really good. It's produced by No ID and LP, so I guess it's not entirely a Run the Jewels beat, but it kind of is like a de facto Run the Jewels beat. Yeah, this was uh, this was very good. Killer Mike is uh, killing it on the mic. Wow. <laughs> wow. You went there, buddy. Yep. Uh, all right, let's move on to this new one from fucking Armani White and ASAP Ferg called Silver Tooth. This one is just infectious. It's incredible. I love hearing it every time it comes on. His major label debut EP, The Road to Casablanca, is scheduled to drop May 5th. Are you any more excited for it after hearing this one? Yeah, bro. This is a fucking banger. This is high energy. It reminds me of like the late 2000s energy and rap. I fucking love this. Yeah, he he is kind of a throwback to that era. You know, like the perfect blend of lyricism and showmanship. I am very much looking forward to that release as well. Yep. Uh, all right, man, let's move into the rock realm of things, starting with this new one from Rest called Keep Going. What are your feelings on it? It was so weird going from the Armani White track to this track. Um, <laughs> we sort by genre, but there's only so much we can no, do. No, I, I, I know. It was just very jarring. Uh, yeah, man, I'm not entirely sure what it is about Rest's music, but it just fucking grabs me. Uh, this song is no exception. Gorgeous track, beautiful lyrics, and magnificent instrumentals i love this song i didn't like it quite as much as you but i did really enjoy this one and i echo all of your sentiments have we covered them before or is this our first track yes we covered their album in late 2021 i believe um and it was coward of us all it was an gotcha. album okay it was an album that they released in 2019 but we covered it in 2021 because um i had just discovered it and needed to show you about it so do you know if this is the beginning like of a new rollout or anything like that? You know, I don't know. There was an album that they put out last last year called End uh, End All the Days. Um, mm -hmm. We did not cover it. Um, maybe uh, it was on my slow week playlist, but uh, we didn't, we never ended ended up covering it. Um, last year was stacked. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, <laughs> yes, it, uh, it could be. It's it's very possible. I hope it is. We'll keep I, an eye on I, it. We'll I, see where it goes. I fucking love their music, man. It's really good stuff. Yeah, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this one. Uh, moving on, we got a new one from Goth Babe called Alone in the Mountains. I already know you're a big fan of this one, but talk <laughs> to me about it anyways. This is indeed a Goth Babe track. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Meaning uh, it is both great and very fun to listen to, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's very good. It's distinctive Goth Babe style, and it, it's just... It, I again something about this dude's music just fucking grabs me and it's like every track I can't name one that I dislike so yeah this one was excellent I I can't remember disliking a goth babe song but this one was top notch agreed uh, moving on we got this Micaiah McRaven interpolation of Big Shot City by Interpol I wish that this was the version on the album because it's fucking fantastic and are they calling this like a remix, an interpolation because their name is Interpol or is it really an interpolation? Because I'm very no confused idea, on man. the wording here. <laughs> My notes say Interpolation. Get it? <laughs> I fucking love this, man. I have no idea what they were calling it or what why they're calling it what they are, but it's it's great. Yeah, I mean, why not call all of your remixes Interpolations if your band's name is fucking Interpol, right? Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, man, new Foo Fighters rescued. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up, man. They are the kings of generic alt-rock. And uh, obviously, rest in peace to Taylor, their drummer. He was a fantastic drummer. Their album, Concrete and Gold, would not have been the same without him. Other than that, this is indeed a Foo Fighters song. It is... Uh, <laughs> 
it is generic it is rock and that's about it man i i i fucking love the foo fighters man i i can't help that i do uh so there's you know like i'm i'm not a fan of every single one of their works like that that one they shot the hbo docuseries for uh sonic sure. highways is not is not my jam but the album after that concrete and gold very much is so so we'll 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 see i don't think i loved their last album so if uh they're on the jack white schedule then i will probably really like this album <laughs> let's hope everybody's on the jack white schedule. <laughs> um yeah man i I've never been as into Foo Fighters as you. It It's weird because they're so successful, but they always sound like they're trying so hard to make a hit to me. And I think that they do. They make very catchy rock music. It's just never grabbed me. Um, but that aside, I think this track is pretty good. It's catchy, and I think it'll do well for them. Nice. Yeah, I, I agree. We'll see what happens. They've announced a new album, and we're going to listen to it. I am sure we will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's talk about this new one from the front bottom. It's called Outlook. Just excellent. I threw this one on the fucking My Scene Isn't Dead playlist. This is just excellent shit. Everything they do just works. And it, they're only getting better with every release. And on top of that, we got a new album announcement. Yes. Their new album, You Are Who You Hang Out With, drops on August 4th. How are you feeling about that? Yes. Uh, I'm very excited for that. I love the front bottoms. Um, the, I just love the way they write music, man. The lyrics on this one are fucking great. Obviously, the instrumentals are insane. It, it's it's just good fucking emo music, man. Like they're very patient. They take their time. They don't rush things in the songs. They just let the songs develop. Right. And I think that really benefits them. Yeah. Super agree. All right, man. New one from the Spirit Box. Not the Spirit Box. New one from Spirit Box called The Void. And as you would expect, it's fucking punchy. It's energetic. Got a really nice groove to it. A little more poppy than some of their heavier stuff. But I dug it. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's still good. I kind of miss the harsh vocals. And I hope they come back to them. They're but... coming back. They're okay, coming back. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank <laughs> I've you. seen some live videos of them recently. And they still play a lot of the heavier stuff live. Yeah, man. Just uh, let me know when you go to the Costco so you can grab me the Spirit Box album on your way home. <laughs> okay, will do. <laughs> Just Facebook. It's cleaner. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk about this new one from The Used called Numb. Is this your song of the week? Fingers crossed. It's not. We're, we're we're coming up to it though. I almost um, I thought it would be. I just you and the used. I associate you guys so much. <laughs> How are you feeling about this one? I am such a big fan of this band, man. They're so good. Uh, the rappy part is a little off brand for them, but it somehow yes. works. So maybe, yeah. Maybe. It's it's a uh, it's more poppy and experimental than usual, but it's really good. And they're what twenty years into their fucking career, they can yeah. do a rap verse if Le- they want. Go you know, for it. Just like we said with the Silver Scene album last year, it's like. You've been successful as a band for 20 plus fucking years. If you're going to experiment, fucking do it at this point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that their fan base would not walk away. You know, I think they would actually right. encourage some experimentation. Right. Or it's a creative dude. Yes. Um, I mean, they been. all are. They all are. Um all right, man. New one from Beartooth called Sunshine. Talk to me about this one. <laughs> hey, so we're getting some more heavy from Beartooth. I feel like the last couple albums they've put out have been kind of soft to me. And this uh, this track has plenty of soft, but it's juxtaposed with like the actual heavy shit that I really like from Beartooth. So, um, yeah, I, I, I liked this song. It was pretty neat. I'm with you and I'm not with you. I yeah, like the I, heavy I parts. And I like the soft parts, but this song just is all over the place tonally. It's fun to throw on and nod along to, but it doesn't really make sense structurally to me. I I get what you're saying. It's like you're verbally describing a song to me. And so then we do the singing part and then we just start fucking screaming. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How do we get from this place to that place? We just fucking do it, man. (laughs) I feel like, I feel like if, you like their music you're it depends on what style of their music you like because if you like their softer stuff then you're just kind of waiting through the heavy stuff to get to the soft part and if you like their heavy part then you're just kind of waiting for through the soft part to get to their heavy stuff i i I get that can i counter with their last song riptide being perfect 
Yeah, fair. <laughs> just fair. Like that's what I want. If that was the perfect balance. The song is so well produced and structured and written. I don't mind if they fuck around a little bit. This song is good. I did enjoy it, but I was also like, eh, this is a little sloppy. Like you guys could clean this up a tiny bit. Yeah, uh, I found Beartooth when they had released their, uh, I believe it's their debut album, Disgusting. And Mm -hmm. God, it's like punishing. And there are some softer parts. Like, obviously, there's clean vocals from Caleb. But fuck, man, that that album is just a just a 40 minute pummeling in in my face. So that's kind of what I fell in love with when I when I started listening to Beartooth. And Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really gotten that back from them since. So. Is Body Bag still their best breakdown? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it was actually voted in like a magazine best breakdown of the year too. That year, interesting. We're gonna have to reinvestigate this and go listen to every single Bear Tooth breakdown and rank them for a podcast. Okay, you twisted my arm. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, let's talk about this new one from WSTR called Poor Boy. We don't get a lot of pop punk that is not super whiny. So I really enjoyed that about this. We don't hear it too often, but I thought they did it really well. How are you feeling about this one? Yeah, man, I'm starting to become a pretty big fan of this band. I'm very excited for the album. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. I, are they releasing an album? Is I that think so. It's co- I think okay. it's called Till the Wheels Fall Off. I'm not 100%. Man. Oh, fuck yeah. I'll, I'll look it up and add it to our calendar after this episode. Yes. Uh, all right, man. New Rancid. Tomorrow never comes. Dear God, they are they are still just old school punk goodness, right? Yep. And this is my song of the week, my man. Yes, of course <laughs> it is. Of course it is. Title track for their new album. I think it actually comes out next month. Um, I could I could be wrong on that. I, I quickly googled it. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, when I, it, it's it's funny. There's like a couple of there, there's like a couple of uh, contestants for my song of the week this week, and I just Same. kept coming back to Ranton and. God, if that is not par for the course with them, dude, they have made extremely good music for almost fucking 30 years now. And Mm -hmm. dear God, man, like (laughs) not a saint anger in their discography, not a saint anger in their discography. Every (laughs) single one of their albums is a banger. I've already pre-ordered the physical uh, copy of this one. Um, My wife and I listen to Indestructible all the time. Like (laughs) Marancid has been a large part of my life for a long time and uh yeah this one this one hit me right there i was like oh my god they're they're still doing it the same way Love <laughs> fuck yes dude i would pre-order albums if i didn't spend all of my money on caliuchus albums but <laughs> um no regrets uh no. no that's fucking awesome i'm very very stoked for their new album this song just fucking rips and is everything i was expecting and wanting when i saw we had a new rancid song on the playlist Honestly, I mean, I, it's only $26 on their website. So I was like, yeah, new vinyl, $26? What the hell? So Nothing every- perks Brandon's ears up more than $26 on a new vinyl. <laughs> sub, sub 30 bucks for a great band that's been doing their thing for 30 years? Sign me the fuck up. Oh, man. How much do you have to pay for the Maria's? Uh, I haven't looked in a long time, bro. I think that's like sale. 300, 500. It fucking might be, bro. Hold on. I'm going to do this live. Fuck it. We're doing Please. It we're looking up the Maria's cinema vinyl valuation right now because it is both one Brandon and I want. It's sold out almost instantly when they put it up. Never been restocked. How much would we have to pay if we wanted cinema on vinyl and to um, order it online? Uh, 60 bucks is the lowest it's gone for 150 it's gone for 150 um yeah man i think it's less than i was expecting because that album is so perfect to me i'm like that's a million dollar fucking album here's the deal though bro they uh a lot of them are not based in the united states there's one for sale for 299 dollars with plus 30 bucks shipping from canada um so so you're gonna pay crazy shipping which I got Ology by Gallant, and I had to buy that from somebody in Japan, worth every penny. Nice. If it's a rare, hard-to-get vinyl, man, just do it. Gallant con- constantly posts when he's asked about that or when people send him pictures. He's like, I can't even get that fucking vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> like, he has his one copy, but it's like, no, nah, man, I ain't got none to give away. All right, I'm going to put this out into the world. If somebody would like a hand-numbered copy of Chat Pile's 
uh, latest album. I forget what it's called. God's the Country. The Split with Nerver? No, d- the God's Country album oh, okay. uh, from last year. I will trade you for the Maria's Cinema. It's it's Ooh. number. You have a numbered chat pile album. I do. Gotcha. And, it, and it's mint, never opened, out of 500. The bait is tasty, and the fish are hopefully going to bite, man. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll doubt see. it. I, do, I right. doubt that the, the chat pile and the Marias have a lot of, have a lot of uh, uh, commingling fans, you know? I don't think so. If I ever get a chance to see the Marias, I will purposefully buy a chat pile shirt to wear to it. So anybody you can better. Me, okay? You better. We'll post it on our Insta. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. We got a new one from the ocean called Subatlantic. This is off their new upcoming album. Really appreciate how dark and grimming, grim and just crushing this fucking song is. I was digging it. What about you? Glad we finally got some harsh vocals from them since the last couple of singles haven't really Maybe had them. that's what it was. That I was, was going to say, I wasn't digging the last few, but I dug this one. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I'm sure the album's going to take us on a journey like most of their projects do. Um, I'm I'm still going into it with an open mind, and I, I kind of knew it, man. When the first when this first single dropped, I was like, there better be fucking harsh vocals and and some some like heaviness to it, and hopefully there that that just from a prog metal band, it's it, it's kind of cool to have kind of directing songs, kind of directing you in another way before they just fucking slam you. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Agree, man. Agree. We will add that one to our release calendar as well, as soon as we can. Um, all right. We got a new one from Tholkandra called blood of slaves, super thrashy, fast, full of break beats. It's a really awesome track, AKA everything up your alley. I imagine. <laughs> yep. Classic black metal feel without it feeling like, uh, sounding like it's been recorded in a tin can and then puked up. Uh, I really like this one, man. This is pretty good. <laughs> the toughest balance to strike in black metal. If you ask me, honestly, a lot, of, a lot of pure black metal fans probably hate the way this is produced and mixed. So God damn it. Can never make those people happy without just sacrificing Bro, something at the altar of shittiness. You they're, know? they're already not happy. That's okay. That's okay. We'll leave them alone. That's very true. <laughs> um, all right. We got a new one from Acacia strain and Jacob Lilly called chain. No idea who Jacob Lilly is, but this whole song just fucking rips, and I have no idea which of the two albums it's off of that they're dropping May 12th, but oh, tune man. back in to see which one when we review those in a few weeks. How right. are you feeling about this one, man, other than it's fucking awesome? Deathcore veterans dropping two albums in the same year. So hot right now. Um, look, man, <laughs> I, I fucking love this, man. These boys do not miss, and this is no exception. I love the album artwork on this fucking it's kind of like it kind of like brings you back down to nature but it's also still really brutal so i don't know yes yes i what is the bird feeding the other birds is it like entrails or something it's got it's got to be entrails maybe okay it could be it could be a number of things we'll see maybe it's in the lyrics bro we got to find that out bunch of metalheads putting their monocle on to just <laughs> zoom in yeah that's definitely some entrails that's probably the small left <laughs> i mean you know how you drop a bunch of weed in front of a bunch of stoners and they immediately become engineers well yes, you drop a, you drop an album cover that's a slightly <laughs> mysterious in front of a bunch of metalheads and they'll find some meaning heating the knife on the electric <laughs> stove until it's hot enough uh, <laughs> doesn't work doesn't work uh, <laughs> You didn't do it right, man. It totally works. Here's what you do. You get a Bic pen and a Snapple bottle, all right? Oh, God. Oh, man. The MacGyver days, a.k.a. just being poor. Um, Right. All right. Let's cap this week's singles off with this new one from Bleeding Through called Wartime. How are you feeling about it? Wow, man. Uh, Bleeding Through does it again. I'm a huge fan of this band and this song. It's funny. I wasn't expecting them to release anything new. And just like last week, I was I threw uh, This Is Love, This Is Murderous in, in my car. And I've been nice. like bumping it. So it's, uh, yeah, man, this was, this was good. What would you think about it? Back in my day, when I was like a scene kid, <laughs> if I saw somebody wearing a Bleeding Through shirt, I would avoid them because they were probably going to kick my fucking ass. <laughs> Um, in terms of this song, man, it, it's pretty formulaic deathcore. But guess what? I kind of like formulaic deathcore, so I'm giving it a thumbs up, man. I, there you I, go. I dug it. There you go. I dug it. 
I hope people don't always think when we say formulaic and stuff that that's a bad thing. I no. like it when people play the hits, you know? For sure. Absolutely. And giving me man. new hits to play, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is a good one. All right, man. Let's move on to the EPs. We got two this week. Both are in the hip-hop category. This first one is Red Veil. It's playing with fire. Uh, personally, other than Gift Bag, I really couldn't get into this release. I'm glad we checked it out, though, because I've been seeing his name floating around for like the past year or two. And until now, I had only heard the Denzel Curry remix of his song PG Baby, which I thought was great. This EP confirmed a lot of my preconceptions about him as an artist based on the limited sample size I had, though, which is he has a ton of fucking potential and is not afraid to be unconventional. He hasn't quite put all of the pieces together yet, but I'm definitely going to be checking out future releases of his going forward. This one probably won't be in my rotation for very long, but it does occasionally get me in like the right mind space or hits me at the right time, kind of like that Baby Keem album did, yeah. which I wouldn't really consider myself a fan of, but in the right mood, I fuck with it. What were your thoughts on this one? Honestly, man, you hit the you hit the nail on the head, dude. Um, I, I I think this EP is good, uh, but like you said, I think uh, I think it's still kind of a, a jigsaw puzzle waiting to be put together, and I think uh, I think he'll get it soon. Uh, Gift bag is great. I actually like PWF too. Yeah, I, I think this dude's like twenty two, maybe two. He's in his early twenties. He's very young. Tons of fucking talent for being so early in his career, and there were some fun tracks on here, but I'm very much looking forward to the next project a little more than this one already yeah yeah we'll see man i think uh i think it should be good uh let's move on to this new one from swiss beats hip-hop 50 volume 2 if there's a volume one i've never heard it and do not know what the fuck it is but this ep is kind of what i needed after a lackluster start to this year in rap music <laughs> Feels like a gift to rap fans of all generations based on the people he has on it, but it's especially rewarding for fans of the mid to late 2000s. <laughs> Swiss is a master when it comes to producing that style, and it shows here. I don't know what my favorite is, probably the track with Wayne, because Wayne and Swiss are just... That's Shaq and Kobe, that's Jordan and Pippen, that is the one and two. <laughs> the intro with Nas is really good too, I imagine the Benny verse perked your ears up. But I'll let you tell me what you liked about it and didn't like about it. Yeah, this EP fucks, bro. Um, I, yeah. I, so, side note real quick, Take Him Out, obviously, is a, is a great song. I think it might be my favorite of the bunch. And Benny's verse obviously kills it. But it's it's Jadakiss that's getting me excited, man. Uh, yes. I, I think he's actually confirmed a new album for this year in an interview. For Look, the man, locks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look, man, Swizz kills the kills the production on this one as is tradition. I really enjoyed it, dude. The J Ele getting J Electronica in here was good. And of course, how can I how can I not talk about how great that little Dirk verse is? I don't know why I'm such I a little Dirk. I forgot you're fan, a Dirk stan. But fuck, that. dude. He just he hits the he's the like only trap artist that I've been like, yeah, I fucking vibe to this shit. And then uh, <laughs> yeah, man, Lil Wayne, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, dude, over the Jay-Z sample, it, yep. it's just fucking awesome. And can we please just really quickly touch on the album artwork? Which Bow is down to the Lamborghini Diablo with a speaker incredible. back. With a yeah, speaker uh, box on the back. If that is a real car, I need to see it in person, man. This It's fucking beautiful. I This is like one of my favorite album artworks of the year by far. Is that a Diablo or a Kuntak? I think it's a Diablo. It's hard to tell with the modifications and without seeing the front. You're going to tell by those back window vents, but I can't really count from here. <laughs> right. God, um, we're nerds. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. Um, all right. You ready to move on to the albums? Yes, I am. So we got a new one from Tiesto. Oh, did we? It's called Drive. We were supposed. I thought we were going to get this one months ago, but it has finally <laughs> arrived. As as an EDM aficionado, I'm very excited to hear your thoughts on this one. So please dive in, man. How is the business on this album? Didn't that song come out like two fucking years ago? Um. Yes, but I, I I will touch on that shortly. <laughs> I knew exactly what this is going to sound like before I press, pre, press play. Look, man, it's fine. It's great for Vegas clubs and the big stage at EDC. But <laughs> honestly, it's super fucking bland and every other adjective that we've already talked about regarding TSO for a long time. The Features are good and topical for today's popular music, except the fucking Black Eyed Peas, which isn't really a feature. It's more of an interpolation or a remix, but yes. whatever. 
It's fucking funny. Interpol it's, didn't do it. It's a remix. <laughs> it's funny, too, because that's like that track. It's a, how old is that? Is that 2007 or some shit? I swear it's like before my this wife. This is a Tiesto together. album. You're reviewing. <laughs> Just, He's not. He doesn't have his finger on the pulse. Exactly. My, my man, what happened? You know, like what even is this album, man? Charlie on does well in her feature, obviously, like uh, on Hot in it. Like we talked about when it dropped. The album is. It's just fine. It's not terrible. It's not good. It just it has. It's 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 not terrible and it's not good. It as as is everything that Tiesto has released since Kaleidoscope, which is and I will die on this hill. The last interesting thing he ever did and probably ever will do. I'm gonna give this somewhere between a three and a four. Hot in it is my standout. Take it away, my man. Uh. I, I, we might have already argued about this, but his his album under the alias Allure after Kaleidoscope is very very good. True. However, however, you 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 touched on it, man. This this album is titled Drive, but it could just as easily be titled Hawkus on the album, and <laughs> it is a lot more fun than good. If you're coming to this album in hopes of something in the vein of Elements of Life or Kaleidoscope, you're going to be very disappointed. But if you come into it looking for some mindless club music to throw on while having some drinks with friends or driving around, it'll do the job. The business became one of the biggest hits of his career, and he ended up building a whole album around that sound. I'm not really mad at him for doing that. Some of the collaborations are a lot more successful than others, but nitpicking this album just seems fucking pointless. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's already a legend, and everything we really get from him in terms of an album is just icing on the cake. I'm giving this one a six for now. My standout is probably Chills. I don't know. It like like none of the songs are great. They're all just good, but I wouldn't go as far to say this album is bad. Yeah, it's okay. Um, look, I, a lot a lot of our fans or a lot of people listening to this podcast might not know a lot about Tiesto. And Tiesto, because he's been fucking doing this forever, Tiesto had his peak in 1998 when he dj to a giant fucking crowd, actual trance music at Disney World China. That is a huge <laughs> fucking deal. My man was playing main stage at Tomorrowland back then. I mean, he was getting it. And then come Kaleidoscope, he changed his sound up a little bit to be a little bit more poppy, a little bit more topical. He did Headline have his favorite... Coachella. Yeah, absolutely. I was there. It was a fucking great set. And first DJ to do so on the main stage, I do, I do believe, too. Uh, yes, first DJ to headline. Uh, on the main stage, yes, although yes. the Chemical Brothers in 2011 did play main stage, although I think they were second to last. I think they subbed that year, gotcha. but whatever. Um, yeah, uh, he put out Kaleidoscope, and he did have his finger on the pulse at that moment. I believe that was 2009 or 2010 when he dropped that album. Nine, yeah. It had fucking Tegan and Sarah on it. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was a pop oh, it's a, it's music a dance album. It's, it's a, a great album. Great album. And then everything after that has been this because he got his residency at Hakkasan. He was the first DJ to get a residency at Hakkasan when it opened at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And it just, it's been like this since. And so if you sense disdain in our voice and you don't know why, go listen to Elements of Life and then go listen to the business again and <laughs> decide for yourself. Okay, well put. Yes, the <laughs> album is not bad, but yes, it is still a drastic fall. And you kind of hit the nail on the head with saying Hakkasan opened and he got his residency as one of the first there. Do you remember the fucking numbers that used to be thrown around for how much DJs were getting per night? And he was one of like the $500,000 a set person. Yep. Whether that's true or not, the guy was still making a ton of fucking money per set, sometimes playing multiple sets per night. So I don't think he just has any motivation financially to dive back into trance other than when he wants to. I don't want him he to. He makes No, I mean I don't <laughs> really either. He makes giant commercial hits now and he puts his name on other artists songs that are probably almost complete so that they can get a bump. If that's what he wants to do with his time, I'm not going to be mad at it. Straight up. That's super fair. All right, let's move on to this new one from Enter Shikari called A Kiss for the Whole World. Have we ever talked about Enter Shikari? <laughs> I think we 
outside of the podcast may have touched briefly on them uh, momentarily, but uh, go ahead. So their three album run of Take to the Skies, Common Dreads, and A Flash Flood of Color cemented me as a fan for life. And even though I haven't really kept up as much with them since then, every time I check out their newest project, they still sound more or less the same. And I mean that as a compliment. For a group that's always pushing the boundaries of whatever genre you consider them to be at this point, they are remarkably consistent, which has to be incredibly difficult considering the sc- the size and scope of their sound. It can be over to, over the top to the point of cheesy at times, but I think that they make it work, which isn't a surprise for a group that's been together for seven albums over 20 years. This one doesn't quite surpass any of their earlier albums for me, but it serves as a nice reminder of just how unique they are. It's just as ambitious as their previous albums, both lyrically and musically, but doesn't feel like it fully explores any of the themes that it sets out to. That could be due to some of these themes being things that they've tackled at length before on previous albums like politics, awakening, enlightenment, growth, peace, war, etc. Or it could also be due to the length of the album, which clocks in at just a little over 30 minutes, making it their shortest album to date. But minor shortcomings and comparisons to their past aside, this album is pretty damn good. It still scratches that experimental post-hardcore fused with UK garage itch that only they can reach. <laughs> um, and and I liked it. I, I really did like it. I came back to it multiple times. I think I have this one at a seven right now. My standout is Please Set Me on Fire. How did you feel about this one? And were you aware of their previous work going into it? Yes, I have listened to Enter Shikari's previous work. Um, I now remember, as I turned this album on, why I always forget about Enter Shikari. Uh, This is one of those bands that I have to be in a a very specific mood to listen to, as they're so unspecific in their music that it's obviously (laughs) like extremely unique. Um, They have never really decided what they want to be. And honestly, I got to respect the shit out of that, man. It's refreshing in a way to hear a band be so much of everything that they're their own thing of everything. Um, Just the fact that we have to be so conceptual when talking about this band is an ode to them. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There are strings, there's double bass grooves, there's clean vocals, there's screams, there's pop influences, there's massive synth solos. And that's just one fucking song, man. How they fit all of this into, uh, like how they fit all of this into an album, let alone seven throughout their career is fucking wild, man. Uh, sometimes, uh, look, man, I, if I'm being honest, it's a little bit too avant-garde for me. I, I, I sometimes, or maybe I just wasn't in the mood, but like, I got to respect what they're doing because they do whatever it is that you would call this very well. And they're nothing if not consistent. Um, I don't mm-hmm. dislike it at all. Like, like, like I do like it, but it, it's, it's almost like, exhausting after every couple songs that I'm like, fuck (laughs) man, you know, um, it is. I don't think I liked it quite as much as you did because I haven't been a, like a massive fan of theirs, um, throughout their career, but I gave Mm -hmm. it a six. Um, my standout is actually jailbreak. I really liked that kind of like jazzy bass line mixed with the strings towards like the middle. And then like there's like more jazz, but like there's screaming. It's fucking weird, but I liked it. I like that track a lot. Jailbreak was my runner up for favorite track, too. That one's fucking awesome. I'm not surprised it was one of your favorites. Please set me on fire is my was my runner up. That one I just picked as my standout because the synths, when they're really going, that sounds like Enter Shikari to me. Like, those synths that they're using are, I'm pretty sure, the same ones that they used on Take to the Skies. It's very much a throwback to that era, even though the song is entirely different from that era. I don't think they're ever going to be the band that made Sorry You're Not a Winner again and played Coachella the same year as Prince, but... (laughs) Um, they are still doing some fucking sick things. I know in the UK their shows are still pretty fucking wild. I have no idea what it's like when they tour the States anymore, but they still sound pretty aggressive. They still sound like they have a lot to say. I'm glad you enjoyed the album at least a little bit, and I'm sure we'll both be returning to this one to see how it ages a little bit with time. Yeah, I think uh, now that I've remembered the band, I will get an itch later this year and be like, ooh, maybe I'll go back to that. Dude, you should go back to a flash flood of color and listen to Gandhi mate Gandhi. That is them at their fucking wildest, and I love that shit. That's I right when the that. like 
dub hardcore whatever the fuck it was hit crunk core they perf- is that what you're just per- gonna say yes yes <laughs> They perfected it and it died right away. <laughs> uh, oh, all Jesus. right, man, let's move on. We got a new one from Recondite that's like a fucking hour and a half called the Dystopian Episodes. <laughs> Talk to me about this encyclopedia uh, of music. You, you say like you say that like it's a bad thing, bro. I don't mean it as a bad thing, um, but it is a long album. <laughs> it, it's a very long album. In fact, I think it's a double album. Um, if you are, it might even be like a triple album. I don't know what you want to call it. If you're on, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see me kind of scrolling through all the different album covers that are actually associated with these tracks. Um, it's a, it's a pretty neat, it's a pretty neat album, man. Look, man, it's minimal techno for an hour and a half. Um, I had no idea that this was dropping, but I'm glad that it did. It's minimal. It's melodic. It's chill as fuck. Recondite has this way of like building the track into something really epic towards the end of it. Um, and he kind of does the same thing with like his entire projects and you can kind of feel the ebb and the flow towards, uh, yeah. towards like, like, like the entire album, you know? Uh, look, I, I don't really know how to objectively review something like this because it is, it's very minimal. There isn't much to review, but the stuff that I listened to, I really enjoyed it. If you have the attention span for an hour and a half and you like minimal techno, give this one a roll. Um, I have both of those things, a very strong like for minimal techno and <laughs> a too. very long attention span. So I gave this one an eight. I really enjoyed this one. My standout was Beam. Beam was my favorite on the record. What are your oh thoughts? Oh my God. You need that on your business card. Brandon May, a strong mind for minimal techno. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. So due to the length of this album, I could only run through it once. So I will Fair. not be giving it a score because I'm still not familiar enough with all of it. But from the listen I did give it, the thorough listen I did give it with the headphones, it was really good. I enjoyed it more than Tom, and I came back to certain tracks from it, like Equilibrium, multiple times throughout the week. But despite enjoying it more than Tom, I still really haven't connected with Recondite beyond the occasional head nod or foot tap, I guess. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like I'm going to have my aha moment while listening to his music one day. Maybe it'll happen when I finally dig into some of his older stuff. Maybe it'll happen when I'm listening to a future album of his. But it hasn't happened for me yet. So I, th- I, I did think enjoy this one more than Tom. But I, I did like it. Nice. Well, I'm glad you liked it, man. Awesome, man. Um, Let's see. I wonder how much the vinyl is going to go of this one. This is going to be, what, like six LPs? Shit, I don't fucking know, man. But you know what I'm really sad about? I'm really sad that I didn't have money to buy Boris Brekka's like, combo album. Did you send me that or did I send that to you? You might have sent that to me. Yeah. Was it the ones he's been releasing? I think it's his Club Vibes. Yeah, the Club Vibes seven. stuff. God, Black yeah. Unicorn. Yeah, he, he, he's released them all on on uh, plastic record disc. And uh, yeah, man, I really wish I had the $180 to spend on it, but I do not. So I won't. Did you do anything for Record Store Day? No, no, I don't. I don't celebrate. I think it's for scalpers now. And I, I already have 18 or so copies of Midnight, so I didn't need the folklore, you know, the folklore reissue. I was talking to a coworker that had never done it before and was very excited like when the subject came up and was like, yeah, I'm going to like go to a record store after work and check it out. And I like instant curmudgeon was like, <laughs> yeah, well, if you weren't in line at six this morning, you're kind of wasting your time. And it's like, I just kind of want to go see, you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't mean to like rain on your parade, but like. As somebody that's done this multiple times, let me tell you, it is not fun. Record store day is not a fun thing. Like, you might get something you like. It's so stressful. And it's more than that, you're a very polite person. I think I'm pretty polite. It is a thing where you cannot be polite. You have to be very selfish. Everybody there is going to be. They might even be physical in a very weird way. Like... I don't know. Every I've been to places that do like the draws and the raffles to try and make it not so chaotic. And I've been to the the mad dash once the gates open. It all sucks. It all <laughs> fucking sucks. You don't control what your shop's getting, how many of it they're getting, right. how many people are going to be there for that. I, I've never had fun at it. I'm glad you kind of don't do it either. Although, yeah. 
Macho Man Randy Savage's rap <laughs> album was released on vinyl this year, and his song few friends got say, it. I was gonna so. say, man, if if you really wanted that Randy, that Macho Man Randy Savage, you were you had to be in line at six a.m. That was um, the item this year, right? Like oh, that it was, was it was that in the folklore reissue, which was I think like the deluxe or the or like the studio sessions for it. The, yeah, they were yeah. huge. Um, there was one album that I wanted, not this record store day, the one prior, um, and it was Silverstein's uh, Arrivals and Departures which had a uh, seven inch single of the demos for this album and like full, obviously 12 inch artwork and shit like that came with like a cool little book. And I reached out to my local record store being like, yo, do you know if you're going to get this? And he was like, no, I don't really know if I get it. I'll try to order it. Blah, 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 blah. Ended Mm -hmm. up finding it on Discogs for like $24. So I was like, fuck it. The reality is that all of these record stores have Discogs accounts and they're going to post whatever doesn't sell that day online. So, I mean, if you're not really gunning for the Macho Man Randy Savage, then I wouldn't line up at six because everybody else has the same idea as you, and they might actually be Macho Man Randy Savage, and you know they they might want to hurt you for it. So, yes, yes. Which have you ever heard that album? I have not. Is it oh, good? It's, it, it's hilarious. No, it's not good. It's <laughs> hilarious. He has a diss track of, of Hulk Hogan on there, which is worth the price alone i will say <laughs> be a that man Hulk. it's great dude um all right let's do this last album review of the week before we get too far off the rails here we got a new one from avatar or probably new as in sometime came out sometime this year yeah february february okay so this album from avatar called dance devil dance came out back in february we finally got around to reviewing it what are your thoughts on it uh, the hard rock slash metal circus that no one actually asked for is finally being reviewed on our podcast. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I like <laughs> Avatar, uh, but the jury is kind of still out on their like entire discography. I like their earlier stuff, uh, like a lot. It's a lot heavier than this is. Uh, the vocals are th- this album is pretty neat. The vocals are interesting throughout, and they remind me of King Diamond a little bit through the cleans. The harsh vocals are performed pretty well. From my understanding, I, I haven't seen them live, but from what I've heard, they put on a hell of a show. Like, circus is the correct word to describe it. Okay. Um, okay. I, uh, I threw this on so you could hear it. It's, uh, it's something I think you need to hear at least once if you haven't heard the band. Um, and it's not going to be my favorite al- album of the year by any means, but I, I did enjoy it. I enjoy their music. I listen to uh, the album every time they drop one. Um, they're an interesting band, and they um, are undeniably electric you know like yes. they undeniably have this have this get the fuck up um which is uh which is yes. pretty cool and they definitely they do. do not take themselves very seriously and i love that in a band i i i i love that in a band that can also make serious music you, you know what i'm saying like if they're really good at what they do kind of like 12 foot ninja it's it's it, it's really bad. Not but taking great. yourself too seriously and being a joke are two different things. Thank you. That those were the words that I was looking for. I'm gonna give this one somewhere between a six or a seven. My standout is hazmat suit. What uh, did you think of your? I'm assuming your first uh, soiree with Avatar. I liked it, man. It's great. super heavy, but they balance it out really well with the more melodic parts of the to the point where it's actually catchy at times, which I wasn't really expecting. <laughs> right based on the uh, aesthetics of this album. It's a bit over the top, but in a good way. I didn't love all of it. I usually skip tracks like Gotta Wanna Riot and The Dirt I'm Buried In on subsequent listens, but I enjoyed a lot more of this album than I didn't. If you're throwing on Chimp Mosh Pit, Clouds Dipped in Chrome, (laughs) count me in every time. I'm giving this album a seven. My standout is on the beach because that's the one I listen to the most, and it fucking ruled. (laughs) Yeah, I went back to On the Beach today on my way home, and I was like, yeah, man, this 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 is a bop. It's a fucking groove, man. I really, yeah. really dug that one. I didn't expect to like this one too much going in, but I, I walked away very happy. I, kn- I, I kind of knew you were going to like it. Uh, I saved it for a slow week because it's not an amazing album, but it's it's always fun to listen to. If you liked the heavier parts of this album, uh, go ahead and check out some of their earlier stuff. Their earlier stuff is sure. mostly heavy, um, but it's still got that kind of like ringleader vibe to it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I really get what you're saying with the whole circus thing. Like, no, no, I think they actually brought a just... circus to their last oh, tour. You're talking like literal aesthetic <laughs> was uh, yeah, fucking... Uh, I'm pretty sure they had a ringleader coat on. People like... swinging, oh, yeah. all that type of shit. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, see, I've been to shows that I would describe as a circus-like atmosphere, and I've seen Dragon Force, who had, like, girls on trampolines and weird shit like that. <laughs> but no, I've never seen a literal circus on stage, so that would be new. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's, like, performance art. Like, hey, know, man, I, I'm I'm fucking I haven't, I haven't seen them, but I, I, if they come near me again, I probably will. They, uh, they, they, have, they have a vibe, and uh, they do that vibe very well, so... I'm really bummed that after I moved out of the desert, it suddenly becomes a place where bands play shows outside of festival season regularly. <laughs> right? That was not going on very much when right? I was living out there. And... I once saw Mozart season at a hookah bar in <laughs> <laughs> with like 20 people, and it was not a good time. <laughs> Trust, bro, I've been to the fucking Elks Lodge to a show, you know, <laughs> like... What the fuck is up, Denny? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, we've got a new we've got a new uh, venue coming up out here called Alvarado Music. It's gonna go on into uh, downtown Indio or Old Town Indio, rather. Um, we have just an hour oh, jaunt sick. down the road. We have the Riverside Municipal Auditorium, which is fucking bad ass. Over the last uh, handful of years, I've seen uh, what quite was that? A few uh, cool bands there. What was that shady one out out in like Indio that was going for a while? Ooh, like bone know. thugs and shit oh, used to play date, there. The, that's the date shed. The date shed. Is that still a place? Uh, we went as recently as 2019, maybe even early 2020. Um, yes, it exists. However, there's no shows that are booked there. I think it's uh, since we've been and, you know, since COVID, uh, Golden Voice has purchased the entirety of the Empire Polo Fields. So they're no longer just promoting. Oh, yeah, that was on that property, and, and right? That was on that property, along with the Tack Room Tavern. So we'll see what happens with that. I hope that they continue to do shows. I honestly hope that they're like re like renovating it. So there could be like, fuck, I don't know, like after parties for Coachella or even like club nights or something there. But, um, yeah, I think uh, I think I think the desert's starting to become something, especially obviously with the giant arena. But that's a Ticketmaster mm -hmm. venue, and you know that I'm not a big fan of that. Nah, bring back live music at the Hood and the Date Shed. <laughs> yeah, man, I saw the fucking Dead Kennedys at the Hood, and it was disgusting. I loved it. You yep. know, like I myself have played the Hood, and it is in fact disgusting. <laughs> but I'm it sure is a very fun place it. to play. Oh, I honestly, my favorite set I ever did. I'm sure. By far. I'm by sure. far. By by far. That place literally let me do whatever I wanted. I think I got to do like <laughs> two sets and I was only supposed to be up there for like an hour. It was fucking awesome. Nice. Um, had a weird kid request one of the remixes off the Bring Me the Horizon Suicide <laughs> Silence album. Hell yeah. That weird kid lives in all of us. That, which which that one did he request? The Tech the... One one? It was the sadness will never end. I don't remember who remixed that one, but Got it was it. a very, I had to turn it off after like a three minutes and transition to <laughs> something else. I played your request, kid. Um, all right. That does it for this week's episode. Join us next week as we break down new releases from Baby Rose, Deb Never, Elenium, and much, much more. If you're watching this on YouTube, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're following along wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to keep up with everything we've got going on, you can find us on Instagram and Reddit. Just search Brandon's face. And last but not least, follow along with our weekly rotating playlist. That way you'll know what we'll be covering each week. You can find the link to that in the show notes. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Late. Peace.